Hi, welcome back to Storytime at Home. It's good to see you again. Before we get started with today's books, I'd like to make sure you know that Summer Reading Club 2020 has kicked off. You can find out all about all of the events that we've got coming up uh, by checking out our calendar on our uh, website, www.falib.org. Um, you can also participate in the reading component by going to our website and finding out about how to register with Read Squared so that you can log your time with books that you enjoy this summer. Um, we have not just our story times that will continue. We've got a wide variety of workshops for both kids and teens, and we're going to be having special presenters and guest performers. So we've got lots going on. Um, it'll be online this summer, different than how we've done it in the past, but we're still going to have a good time, and we certainly hope you will join us. All right, we are going to have fun with some bears today. I've got three books for you and a super dude, super duper cute craft uh, that I'm so excited to share with you. So you ready to get started? All right, our first book today is A Bedtime for Bear. I love these books very much. The bear is such a great character and so is the mouse. Everything had to be just so for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit in the exact right spot on his bedstand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug. And most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. Shh. Look at that face. <laughs> One evening, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping at his front door. Camera over just a little bit. There we go. When he opened the door, there stood Mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. He clasped a tiny suitcase in his paw. You see it right there? Isn't that adorable? <laughs> I am here to spend the night, exclaimed Mouse with a happy wiggle of his whiskers. Surely we agreed on next Tuesday, Hitch protested Bear. Oh, no, said Mouse. You most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Bear had never had an overnight guest before. Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise, and Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet at bedtime. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers and warm cocoa. Soon it was time for bed. Remember, I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said the mouse. Bear set out his glass of water, adjusted his nightcap, fluffed his favorite pillow, and climbed into bed. It was very, very quiet, so he closed his eyes. Bristle, 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 bristle. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. <clears throat> Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. Oh, most sorry, said Mouse. Bear closed his eyes again. Ooh, he's grumpy. Look at that. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most uh, patiently. Deepest apologies, said Mouse. Look where Mouse is going to be sleeping. You see it at the drawer in the bedside table? That's his bed. How cute is that? <laughs> queek, creak, squeak, rattle went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Bear jammed his pillow over his ears, gritted his teeth, and closed his eyes. He was just about to drift off when... Good night, Bear, Mouse called softly. Bear tried to pretend he was asleep. Good night! Mouse called a little louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, Mouse said. <laughs> See that picture? Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into his pillow. Yes! Amazing! How about this? Mouse said from under his pillow. Quiet! Mouse slipped under his blankets, crawled to the bottom of his bed, and whispered, can you hear? Silence, Bear roared. 
Mal slid from his bed, went into the closet, and said in the tiniest possible voice, into the farthest, darkest, teeniest possible corner of the closet, surely you can't hear. Will this torment never cease, wailed Bear. Sorry, Bear. Good night, Bear, whispered Mouse, tiptoeing back into bed, as quiet as a, you know. <laughs> Bear fluffed his favorite pillow, adjusted his nightcap, and waited. But there was no more sound for Mouse. At last, it was quiet. Very, very quiet. But then Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? No answer. Bear heard a crick, crick, crick on the floorboards. I know it's you. No answer. You can't fool me, Bear growled. But he didn't sound very certain. Bear heard a low moaning noise. Mouse? Silence. See, looks like his little buddy's fast asleep, but he's not. Look how big his eyes are. He's scared. Bear was sure something rustled on the floor. Mouse, he cried, wake up. Mouse stumbled out of bed, small and gray and sleepy-eyed. Well, what is it? But Bear couldn't see any rustly, moany sort of thing in his room. His room looked quite like it always looked. Oh, <laughs> nothing, lied Bear, still clutching his blanket to his chin. I, I must have been talking in my sleep, Bear chuckled. But it was rather quavery. Shh. Oh, ah, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Ah, said Mouse, Mouse with a glance at Bear. I'm getting tongue-tied this morning. Could I peek under your bed, asked Mouse. Sometimes I like to check for things, you know. Oh, uh, well, if you insist, said Bear. Nope, I don't see anything, said Mouse from under the bed. Oh, uh, you'll, you'll want to check behind the curtains, I suppose, Bear said. Yep, all clear, declared Mouse a moment later. Um, better check the closet, offered Bear. Then you, you, you won't be the least bit nervous. Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Good night. Wait, said Bear. You'll want a bedtime story, I expect, said Bear. For your nerves. For my nerves, said Mouse. Oh, oh, indeed. I'm quite shaken. Who do you think is actually shaken here? You think it's the mouse or is it really the bear? I guess really the bear. Then with an eager flick of his tail, he settled on Bear's favorite pillow. And Bear told him all about the adventures of the brave, strong bear and the very frightened little mouse. There, is he telling the story? <laughs> Soon Bear began to yawn and Mouse oh, yawned too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Good night, Mouse, Bear mumbled. Then Bear began to snore loudly, but Mouse just smiled. Soon, both Mouse and Bear were fast asleep. Shh. See them together there? Look at Mouse. See, he's got these little earmuffs to block the snoring. <laughs> Can you say the end with me? The end. All right. Book number two. There are no bears in this bakery. There are no bears in Little Bear Bakery. I'm the whiskers of this neighborhood. And if it flutters, scurries, or scampers here, I know about it. The name is Muffin, and this is my tail. See, there he is, all his different spots. Each night, the moon rises, the bread rises, and I rise. The air cools, and the sounds get interesting. That's when the night shift begins. Scratch, scratch, squeak is the mouse behind the bakery. Clang, crash, crunch, crunch is the raccoons in the dumpster. Snip, snip, flap, flap is the bats visiting the barber shop. I thought I knew all the night sounds until last night. See him checking all the sounds out? There's the little mouse. 
and the raccoons in the dumpster. Ooh, and the bats. <laughs> Last night, after the sun rolled off the edge of the sky, a mysterious new sound rumbled over the windowsill. Grrr. I stepped out to investigate. The air was cool and wet like a dog's nose. The alley was empty. No mouse, no raccoon, not even a bat. The bakery's back window was open like a crooked smile. Grrr. I slipped into the darkness like icing melting down a hot cake. Inside, I listened for clues. Maybe it was a mouse. Mouse mice do love sprinkles. Grrr. That's when I saw it. It was the biggest mouse I'd ever seen. Whoa! Look at the kitty cat's face. <laughs> Grrr. Is that a mouse? No! It was actually the smallest bear I'd ever seen. I was surprised. The bear was surprised. My tail was the most surprised. <laughs> Grumbled from the bear's belly. Is that what your tummy does when it's hungry? Does it growl? Up close, the bear smelled like old socks, cinnamon, and adventure. The problem was clear and I was on the case. The rumbling grew softer and softer until burp. For a moment, everything was quiet, too quiet. So look at this. Look at him with the glass cake cover on his head. <laughs> and look at that. The cat's helping him get a donut out of the donut case. He's helping him, he's helping feed him, isn't he? So his tummy won't rumble anymore. <laughs> Oh, I heard snuffling sounds behind me, and I had a tail. I mean, my tail had a tail. I mean, there was something in the darkness. Look at them both look up. What do you think it is? The darkness had eyes, and they were looking at me. My whiskers trembled. My paws shook. It was an enormous bear. It smelled like the dumpster on a hot day and rumbled louder than the vacuum cleaner. Suddenly, it was lights out. Everything went dark and I couldn't move. I was smushed like a muffin between the couch cushions. I was in the middle of a giant bear hug. It was warm like a bath mat in the sunshine. It smelled like that bath mat needed a bath. There was a low rumble from somewhere in the fur. Oh wait, that was me purring. It turns out that big bears like sprinkles too. <laughs> Light began to nibble at the edges of the window. It was time for naps. Even my shadow was sleepy. I made sure the bears got on their way safely. See them saying goodbye to each other? <laughs> the sun rose and stretched like a yawn down the alley. The bears rumbled back to the forest. My, the night shift had ended and my job here was done. There they go. There. So that's it. Another case closed by Muffin. No bears in Little Bear Bakery. Not anymore. I took care of them. It was a messy job, but I handled it. Now it's time for a nap. And by the way, we're out of donuts. <laughs> Look at that. They had a good time in the bakery. Did they leave anything? Not much, just crumbs. And she's wondering what happened. <laughs> you think she'll ever figure it out? <laughs> All right, last book, then we'll do a little song and a craft, Hugless Douglas. One spring morning, a sleepy someone let out a big yawn from the back of a deep, dark cave. 
It was a young brown bear and his name was Douglas. I need a hug, said Douglas. So he wriggled out of his pajamas, brushed his hair, put on a scarf and went to look for one. My best hugs are big, thought Douglas. So he went up to the biggest thing he could find, wrapped his arms all the way around and gave it a squeeze. What did he find to hug? Is that a big boulder? Yeah, it didn't feel right. Oof, grunted Douglas. It's a bit too heavy. Clunk. <laughs> My best hugs are tall, thought Douglas. So he went up to the tallest thing he could find. And what is that? The tree, yeah. He hugged the bottom, he hugged the middle, and he hugged as high as he could reach. <laughs> but it was all wrong, and it gave him splinters. My best hugs are comfy, thought Douglas, as he trotted towards a cozy-looking bush. He hugged the bush, but something felt very odd. The leaves quivered and trembled. Hmm. And ran away. Look at that. What is going on here? <laughs> Look at Douglas's face. Give me a hug, cried Douglas. What was hiding in the bush? The sheep? Yep. No, bah, the sheep. We're too busy. He scooped up armfuls anyway and tried to cuddle them gently, but they kicked and squirmed and didn't like it at all. Poor Douglas. Why can't I find a hug, he said. If I want a hug, said a wise owl, I sit in my tree and, let me try, whooped Douglas, and he scrambled up next to the owl. But he soon found himself in a little trouble. Whoo, whoo, said the owl angrily. See, he tried to hug the owl and look at all the feathers. Mm, didn't work. I only wanted a hug, sniffed Douglas. Perhaps there's one down here? He felt something long-eared and rabbity and gave it a tug. There's the rabbit in his little den. Douglas could tell the rabbit didn't want a hug. He sniffed again and without thinking, wiped his nose on its fluffy tail. Excuse me, shouted the rabbit. Put me down. But I need a hug, said Douglas, and I can't find one anywhere. Oh, I see, said the rabbit kindly. Come with me. He took Douglas by the paw and led him up, down, and around. At last they came to a deep, dark cave where a sleepy someone was just waking up. Yawn! I wonder who's in that deep, dark cave. Douglas peeped inside. He had the funniest feeling that he knew the someone very well. Hug, asked Douglas, and ran as fast as he could toward his mommy. Look at that. Come to think of it, my best hugs are for, from someone I love, said Douglas. And he snuggled into the biggest, warmest arms he knew. Oh, look. And the book ends with all these different types of hugs. Sandwich, upside down, daisy chain, tummy hug. Look at all those. See them? <laughs> Can you say the end? The end. All right. I love those books. They're all so sweet and silly. Okay, real quick. I have a very easy finger puppet craft for you to do. Look at these. There's one. <laughs> there's two. And there's three. Look at them. See that? We're going to do a real quick little song with them and then I'll show you how to make them. We're going to do three little bears, paws in the honey tree, teasing little honeybee. <clears throat> Can't sting me. Along comes the bee, buzzing loud as can be. Bzzz. Oh, and stings that bee with his paws in the tree. Did he get him in the belly? He got him in the tummy. Oh my goodness. 
Two little bears, paws in the honey tree. Can you scoop out some of that honey? Mmm, nice and sweet. Teasing little honeybee, can't sting me. <laughs> Along comes the bee, buzzing loud as can be. Bzzz, ouch! And stings that bear with his paws in the tree. Got him right on the top of the head, didn't he? Yep. One little bear, paws in the honey tree. Can you scoop out the honey? Mm -hmm. Teasing little honeybee, can't sting me. <sniffs> Along comes the honeybee, buzzing loud as can be. Bzzz. Ouch! And stings that bear with his paws in the tree. Got him on one of those paws, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> okay, this is super easy to do. These are just two pieces of felt. See? You cut the front or the back, give them some paws and some ears, and this plain piece goes on the front. And I am not a good sewer, but I managed to put these together, so I promise they're super easy to sew together. Or you can use fabric glue and just put the glue around the edges and sandwich them together and let them dry. Make sure they're good and dry. And then you can either draw on their faces or you can use little tiny pieces of felt or googly eyes. Let me show you again. I used felt and a Sharpie. So there's his tummy and these are all little pieces of felt and I just drew his little button eyes and the nose. Actually, you could use this for the story, Three Bear, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There's the baby bear and the papa bear and the mama bear. And you could do other animals too. You could do cats and dogs. All you need is just that basic shape. Make sure your finger fits inside. And then you can either sew or glue it together and add the ears and the mouth and nose just how you want it. You could have your own puppet show. How fun is that? All right. Well, thanks for joining me again for Storytime at Home. I can't wait to see you again. Also, check out our website to make sure you know everything that's coming up for SRC 2020. See you soon. Bye.